Okay, do you want to do the levee trail? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so I think it's the next light you're going to turn right. Oh, at the light? Yeah, at okay. the light. Hi! It's a new vlog. It's Monday. Hi! <laughs> Hi! Look who I'm with! <laughs> oh my gosh, she goes, Hi! <laughs> I'm a little distracted. So, hi, so welcome to the one. vlog. Yeah, this one. Mom and I are going hiking. It's Monday. It's Monday of spring break. I don't normally teach on Mondays anyway, but I am normally working on Mondays. So to be able to go for a hike with mom today is really nice. And it is one of the last yeah. cool-ish days we're going to have. We're trying to like squeeze out every last bit. So we're gonna do the levee trail. We're gonna do the trail that I did, pretty much the same hike I did when I got rained on, but it was just such. But he's here. Yeah, well, it's Monday. <laughs> Everyone's working. I was just- park like just on the park, other side. Park over this way. Yeah, there are some like dots. So there there are technically lane lines, so you might want to back up so you oh, can I see, see them. One. Yeah. But no, I was joking with mom on the drive. What that thing is. Yeah, on the drive up here that she, we were having trouble getting out of my neighborhood because of traffic and she's like, oh yeah, it's still rush hour. And I'm like, oh yeah, because like it's a work day. But mom's retired and I'm on spring break, so yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yesterday I kept thinking it was Saturday, even though it was Sunday, and I've completely like lost track of what day of the week it is already, even though it's still only the beginning of spring break. So we're gonna do the levee trail. We might sing depending on how we feel, see if we do a little bit down at the end, like I did when I had that amazing surprise at what is beyond the end. I'll you haven't seen that vlog yet then. No. Uh -uh. For the double hike weekend vlog. No. Uh -uh. Okay, she needs to watch that, but we might we might do that. We're going to do that hike, which I didn't think I was going to do that hike again this season, but since mom can go hiking with me and since the weather's pretty good, we're going to go. We're going to do it. Go to the <laughs> okay. So, All right, let's go. <laughs> So here we are, we're at the end of the levee trail and it is beautiful. A little warm, but not too bad. You think you can go another like 0.2 miles? Yeah, I'm fine, I'm just trying to get a picture of the end of the levee trail. Okay, well then let me come around behind mom so she can, oh, there's a nice breeze. That feels I'm sure good. I'm I got this picture before, but. Yeah, so Andrew we've been. taking me on her little adventure now. <laughs> we've been going Surprise. for about one point two miles and we're back at the end of the levee trail which is just one of my, this is one of my favorite views this view back here oh and now i'm gonna take her out this way to show her the surprise so take a look at this view 
Okay. So I'm going to ask you later if it goes where you think it goes. <laughs> Trail? Yeah. Okay. We're not going to go that far because we don't have that much energy. I would think it goes... It's not Fountain Hills over there, is it? No. But just like you've got this hill, that hill, those hills in the distance. Just think about like where you think... Farmhouse. I don't know. Let's go. It's not more so much like the terrain, but I don't want to say too much more. I'm going to make her. She's going to guess because I was surprised. I wasn't expecting it. No, we're not going to find any structure. So that's not no the correct Water. guess. Oh, I wish, but no. All right. uh, bear den. <laughs> no, no bear dens, no rattlesnake dens, nothing right, like that. Then. A Starbucks. <laughs> That would be cool, but also a bit sad that they'd be allowed to build out here. They, they are everywhere. Although Black Rock Coffee is starting to... What coffee? Black Rock. Well, I've heard Dutch Bros is really big. Uh, there are like three new Black Rocks in my general neighborhood I I heard of them. Where are they from? that have just started popping up. I have no idea. I need to look them up. Are you going to end up at the Mayo Clinic or something? No, we're not going that far. We're just oh. going 0. 0.2 miles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I think they're on the other side of that mountain range there. Yeah. Okay, a basis stool. No, no basis. She's going in all the wrong direction with her guesses. Something like not coyote then, because obviously coyotes don't stay in that long. Not <laughs> you're thinking about something I, i'm so i don't want to say too much it's the direction of the trail not the thing we're going to see she's so cold it's not even it's funny you go these? yeah straight See, if I give her a hint now, she's going to guess because it's starting to become more visible. Back there, did you think it goes up, down, or flat? Down. You thought, you thought down from the beginning? How far down do you think it goes? We're getting to where you can see. Yeah. <laughs> it goes like straight down. way steeper down than you think. Yeah. But from back there, from the levee trail, it looks like this hill but doesn't tight. look as yeah, as tall. Yeah, it looks like the levee trail is pretty much level. Yeah. I think this is a gated. So I'm going to flip you guys around. I'm just still not over the views from here. We're only going to go down a tiny bit more. Pretty much is what it feels like. It just goes it's much steeper down it's a much steeper drop than you would think flood zone <laughs> yeah because there's homes right there but they come up right behind this bush this bush is block blocking them
Okay. I can't. <laughs> but good surprise? Yeah. Was that cool? Yeah. It was the Grand Canyon. Well, okay. Not, not quite the Grand Canyon, but not quite as that mountain does. It, it, it's not quite the little hill that you think it is. It yeah. is a little bit taller because the yeah, ground. It definitely goes down into a pretty deep ravine. So I'll scout that out next season, Mama, and then maybe you can join me once I figure out exactly where it goes. Where it goes and if it's a nice loop, because it might be a good loop. No, it's not going to loop. It doesn't loop. Well, that other thing it doesn't loop. loop. That, oh, that doesn't loop? No, I wish it did. It doesn't. Okay. Well. <laughs> I've examined the map. It doesn't, it doesn't loop that way. But what we could do is drive both of our cars out here. I put, we leave my car at the one end. I get in your car, we drive to this end. Yeah. We hike from this parking lot around to that parking lot and then drive back to collect the other car. Yeah. So we could do that. Cause from this point to the other trailhead is 2.2 miles. Yeah. So that would be 3.4 miles total. Yeah if we did that. Oh, so okay. that might be something to think about yeah. instead of going out and then reversing our steps. So we are now hiking back down the levee trail, being mindful of all the rocks and bushes that we're, and twigs, <laughs> and twigs that yeah. we're walking around, yeah. making sure that the twigs are in fact actually twigs and that they're not moving. But there are so many of these really pretty purple flowers. Mom says they're a kind of lupin. And I have not seen them growing this much in any other part of the trail, but they just must love something along the levee trail here. Something about maybe that it's a bit raised up and gets more sunlight or something. But yeah, we've been having fun so far and now we're just hiking back to the car. All right, we're done. We're a little bit warm, a little bit sweaty, <laughs> but it was beautiful. Yeah, it was nice. The weather was really nice. It wasn't too breezy um, or, or windy. I mean, it could have been a tiny bit breezier just to cool you off a little bit. My watch says 64. At least it wasn't blowing what is your, into our... Does that say 83? Yeah, it That's been hot. sitting in the sun. That's, is that indoor or outdoor temperature? Well, I don't know where it, it, it's for outdoor, okay. but I'm sure wherever it's, it's, it's been at, cooking it, in the sun. Yeah, it gets it gets hot. The car gets hot. So. <sighs> Keep having to hit my watch. Um, my watch says it's 64. It feels a little bit more like 68, 69 in the sun. Yeah. But it's still beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Semi-cloudy. Um, yeah, just a tiny bit of hazy cloud cover but that's cutting the sun just enough that I think it kept it pretty comfortable. Yeah. Um, so we've had a lovely hike. <laughs> it's really nice. But mom's gotta get home. We're both ready for lunch 
and for a shower. <laughs> and then I'm gonna sit and I wanna do some writing and maybe some reading, but um, it's spring break, so I don't have to work. So I'll, I'll catch you guys up on what we're doing, what I'm doing the rest of the day once I get cleaned up. But first priority is shower and lunch and then we'll figure out the rest of the day. But Is it spring break even from your own personal writing? You know, your novel? No, because I'm I'm like, I think at this point I'm 6,000 words away from I think the end. I'm oh. like part way through the last chapter oh. and then the epilogue. Ah. So I'm trying to finish Across the Pond 4 oh. before the end of spring break. Oh, I didn't even know that's what you were working on. That's what on. I'm working I on. You were doing another independent art. That's what I'm starting next. So I'm hoping to finish Across the Pond 4 sometime in the next few days okay. to like the first half of spring break and then I can spend the second half of spring break getting back into my outline for Independent Hearts 3 and then I'll spend the rest of the month outlining IH3 and then April is Camp Nano and I'm going to start writing IH3 during April. Oh, okay. So that is, and I'll take the rest of March and April off of across the pond four and give myself a break from it, have my alpha readers read it. And then in May, when I'm not teaching anymore, I think then I can start working on multiple projects at a time again, fingers crossed. So yeah, so that's the plan for that roughly. So right. I'm gonna chat to mom. So mom say goodbye. Bye everyone, <laughs> have a good rest of your day. Or and week or whatever, when Andrew posts this. Yeah, we'll see mom again soon. Um, in a future vlog during spring break. But yeah, we're gonna chat now and I will talk to you guys in a little while once I'm a bit freshened up and fed. <laughs> I've painted my nails. We know it's spring when I bust out the really, really bright, bright pink nail polish. I'm done with the pale pinks for now. I'm done with the berry colors, all the like wintry shades. And we're going full on bright pink. I'm not going to show you too close because I definitely like went outside the lines a bit and I've got it on the skin around my fingernails. That will come off over the next day or so. I need to do some planning. I'm not gonna do it today. I'm not gonna do it in this vlog, but I've started a little sticky note list. I think during spring break, I haven't set up my planner for March um, other than my writing page this page for my writing tracker. Set that up with a couple goals, which is really just finish across the pond four and finish the outline for Independent Hearts 3. So I need to switch back to, like the last thing I did in my planner planner is was my birthday week. And that was not last week, but the week before. So we need to update my planner. I'm just gonna put everything at the front page of March. So I want to, I think during spring break, I want to take some time, maybe tomorrow or Wednesday, and plan the rest of March, but also plan April. Just get April set up in the planner. And then that will get me through the rest of the semester, and I won't have to worry, and it'll all be fine. So on my really important list, taxes. <laughs> I've got some receipts that need to be, I can take these off of the little bags the prescriptions came in, but I've got some receipts that need to be reimbursed from my FSA. So I wanna put those in my planner so that I don't forget them. But taxes need to get done in March. So I think I want to, during spring break, I want to prep my taxes and then later in March, do my taxes. I don't think doing them will take that long. What's gonna be the pain is like prepping everything. So I should do that while I'm on spring break. And then I need to do my income-driven repayment plan application renewal. 
and I can't do that until after taxes are done anyway. So that needs to get done. I had a moment of panic. I got the email recently. The subject of the email is your payment will increase soon, which like panic right there. And then you open the email and in bold, the first thing that like really draws the eye is what my payment will be if I don't renew the income driven repayment plan, which is a staggering amount <laughs> for my my current income and my current budget. It's like, that's not happening. Like that's more than a car payment. It's not a mortgage payment, but it's more than a car payment. And like, I still need a new car. <laughs> so yeah, but then you read closer and it's like, it's like, this should be the subject line is the first line of their emails. What should be the subject line? Andrea, it's time to recertify your payment repayment plan. That should be the subject line, not your payment will increase soon because it might not increase soon. If I recertify, it should stay about the same, maybe go slightly up. So to say your payment will increase soon, exclamation, I should use this with my, with my business students as an example, like strip out anything that's identifying, but like how not to word an email and the subject line. The subject should be time to recertify your repayment plan. That would have been much kinder to my brain. But yeah, it's just, so then it's got the dates of deadline to submit, which is May 2nd, so I've got plenty of time. Um, it is always after I do my taxes anyway. And then June 6th is when my current plan will expire and June 7th is what my payment amount will change to if I don't recertify. So like you read the email and the blood pressure comes back down, but <laughs> you see the subject line and you see that number and blood pressure skyrockets. So yeah, it's not, not ideal. Now I can write, but first, I think it's time for a plant update because it's been a while since I've shown you guys, but this is Callie, my Calenco succulent. I named her, I decided it's a she and I named her Callie. I got her in July, no June, oh, when was it? July 8th. Got her July 8th. So she is more than six months. I haven't shown her on the vlog in a while, but she's doing well. She's doing really well. I don't know, some of these older leaves are looking a little bit not so happy. And I definitely don't think I've been pruning her quite right because there's some bits that like, they just seem to die where I cut them. But then other bits like this and this whole stem are looking so good and so healthy. So I need to do some more research on them. She has always had flowers. I thought at a certain point the flowers were just gonna die off completely and she'd be just green leaves for a while. But she has always had flowers. So like these ones are looking pretty good. They're looking really lovely. They'll eventually die off, but there's some buds here and some here that will flower soon. Throughout the winter, she's been pretty much living in the back corner of my windowsill here because that's the one corner that does get some direct sunlight every morning. But throughout the summer, as the sun shifts in its position, she tends to live at the corner of my desk because it's the front bit by my desk, this side of the window, that gets the direct sunlight in the middle of the summer. So. Yeah, I just thought I'd show you guys what she's looking like. She's doing really well. But yeah, plant update, because she's actually still alive more than six months later. Did not think that was going to happen because I am such a black thumb usually, but I need to keep an eye out. I'll have to look this summer. Maybe it's around July that Whole Foods puts out more of these calencos. So I think I want to try to pick up another one. If she's still alive by the year anniversary of getting her, I want to get a little sister for her. But yeah, there's your little plant update for no one who was wondering, but I'm just very proud of myself that I've managed to keep her alive since July. But yeah, I'm going to get writing now. I've already done, I did a little bit of writing while I was waiting for mom this morning. So I've already done 245 words. I need at least 881 to reach 110,000 words by the end of next Sunday. I th I'm going to do more than 881. I'm going to do at least a thousand words today. So yeah, I'm going to shut up and get writing. Give 
Give me love, give me all your love, oh, cause I want you. No one else makes me feel this way, don't know what you do. Hold my hand, could you hold my hand, look me in the eyes. You and me, yeah, that's all I need. That is my word count for the day. I've been drinking some peppermint tea and I had a croissant. It's a little bit late to have a snack, but it's fine. The sun is going down. It is six o'clock. I've done a lot of writing. I am down to the last scene of chapter 24 and I am at 106,639 words total in the manuscript. I'm excited. I'm feeling really, really good about where this is at. I feel really good about the resolutions that I'm writing and I'm excited to write this last big scene. I think this one is, I know there are things I need to go back and fix, but I think writing out this scene and this resolution will help me figure out what I need to go back and like, lay some breadcrumbs and lay better groundwork just to make this make sense. That's the one thing that I do kind of worry about, that it's just not quite what it possibly needs to be to make the ending believable, if that makes sense. But yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with it. I'm really liking it. And it's just been a lovely time writing. I think today what's brought me joy while writing, because Anna, again, it was an excellent idea for me to start sharing what what brings me joy as I'm writing during each writing session. I think today it's just been just how quiet and relaxing and how spring-like. Like I've had my fake flowers and my real plant and the London candle going and I've had my tea and my beautiful bright pink, bright floral mug. I had my bright pink nail polish. I'm just feeling very kind of spring-like and also just having a Monday where I can just focus on writing, where I haven't had any grading, any emails, like I'm on break. I don't have to work to just, like this is making me excited for the summer and just like knowing that in just another several weeks, this will be the norm and I'll be able to just spend the whole day writing if I want. Obviously, I've not spent the whole day writing. I did other stuff. I went hiking and all of that stuff. But yeah, it's just, it's been so, so lovely. So I'm looking forward to the rest of this week. But yeah, it's just been really, really lovely working on this. So yeah, I need to go get some dinner sorted because it is 6.13, so I need to get dinner. I have been watching Defending Jacob on Apple TV. I started watching it ages ago. I watched the first episode and then I clearly got distracted and didn't watch anything else. I didn't go back and watch it. And so I started watching it again last night. And so I'd already watched one episode out of the eight 
and then I watched six episodes and got up to the last episode last night. So I've got the last episode to finish watching today. So I'm gonna, I think I'll finish that while I get dinner going and, and eat dinner. But I'm really enjoying it. It's been really, really good so far, but I, I don't wanna spoil anything, but like I, it's at a point now where I'm like, okay, what is this last, like what is this last episode going to be about? So like clearly something is left to happen and I can't figure out what? So I'm really curious. So I want to just finish that. I'm just gonna have a cozy, cozy evening and just keep reminding myself that it, it's not Sunday. I keep feeling like it's the weekend and it's not. It's Monday and I'm on spring break and I don't have to work tomorrow. I, like yesterday I kept feeling like it was Saturday because I knew I didn't have to work today. So it made it feel like it was Saturday and today was Sunday. But today still feels like it might be Saturday because I don't have to work tomorrow. So I keep having to remind myself, I don't have to work tomorrow because I'm on spring break, but tomorrow is Tuesday. It's Monday night. What do I normally watch on Monday nights? I don't think I have anything that I watch on Monday nights. Tomorrow I'll have The Bachelor. I need to not forget that. But yeah, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. I don't know what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna shut up and just go watch some TV. laying here thinking there are three things we shouldn't turn into a drinking game here on this channel how many times I say I'm tired how many times I use the word cozy and how many times I say I love my new couch <laughs> but it's really true I love this thing like I am just all stretched out on the couch. I am just so comfortable and living my best cozy couch sloth life. That's really all I have to say about that. But also, like, it's so easy for me to just sit up. If I was all laid out on my old futon, I'd still be trying to sit up right now. So let me come down here. Before we wrap up this vlog, I was looking at the comments that have been coming in on the vlog I put up today, and Avi, Avi the author, who, thank you, you just leave so many amazing comments, and they just make me so, I feel like we have so much in common, and I wish we could just go get a cup of coffee and just have a long chat together, because I feel like we could talk for hours. Avi asked in her comment, Question. How did you know you wanted to write romance? I'm struggling to nail down a genre. Read mostly fantasy, but since turning 40, my taste has changed. I like cozy mysteries and romance. But I feel major imposter syndrome writing romance. One with a love life as tragic as mine should not, to put that all in caps, write romance. And the cozy mysteries are so difficult to plot with all the clues, foreshadowing, and reveals. I might be overthinking it, but I want all my novels to take place in the same universe, and nailing down a genre might do that. But I have a K-pop fantasy s series, a contemporary series, and an anime-inspired series, WIPs. Hashtag. I relate relate to so many of this so much of this I mean having all my books technically all of my books do take place in the same universe and I feel like that's really easy to do when you write romance I don't think you have to do that but as for how I knew I wanted to write romance it's the main thing I read and so it is the genre that I know the best but I do have a fantasy series that I've been slowly developing. It was the first book I ever wrote was book one of that series. And then I started writing book one of Across the Pond and that became the first thing that I published and then I've published romance ever since. I, 
to call my love life tragic might be a bit hyperbolic, but I do relate. Um, like, I'm not exactly living here, living the, the romantic dream life myself. I've had my heart broken. I've dated guys that just were not not right for me, not good for me. I've had a complicated romantic past. We'll just, we'll just summarize it that way. I know they say write what you know. I don't think you have to take that idea too literally. So I write what I know in terms of my main characters tend to be either book lovers or academics or there's some aspect of their personality that is similar to my own but there's lots of things that I make very different from me and my life. My books are definitely my romantic fantasy. What you know my characters live out the romances that I wish I could have and I don't think that makes them any less valid or any less entertaining but like I don't think that's a prerequisite. Like, if you like romance and want to write romance, I don't think your own romantic history should be a barrier there. Otherwise, if only people who have lived out the stereotypical happily ever after were allowed to write romance, there would be significantly fewer romance novels out there. It, to a certain extent, romance is fantasy. It's, we're, we're all, we're writing fairy tales. That's certainly how I've been approaching my royal romance. It's, it's a fairy tale. It's just, it's not full of magic. And I feel like all romance is. You know, Across the Pond, that whole book, book one, came about because I had this fantasy of visiting London and walking around the city and bumping into my current celebrity crush, movie star celebrity crush, and having him fall madly in love with me. That was the premise for the novel. That's what I wrote. And everyone seems to really like that book. So, like, I wouldn't let the, the imposter syndrome that you're talking about I wouldn't let that stop anyone from writing romance if that is the genre that you like. Read the genre, understand the genre, learn what the reader expectations for romance are and make sure that you follow that more or less. Learn the rules before you break them sort of a thing, but don't let that stop you. But I do relate like cozy mysteries. I would love to write cozy mysteries, but I agree it, they're difficult to plot out all the clues and the foreshadowing and the reveals and to get the write a good mystery that people don't guess within the first five chapters. Like, I love reading them. Same thing with thrillers. I would love to write a thriller mystery one day. I just don't think I have that talent. It is a very special talent. But again, I think the more you read, the more you learn about the genre, the more you play with it, the more you write it the wrong way, and learn from those mistakes, the better you get. So I really wouldn't let any kind of imposter syndrome stop you from writing the first draft of anything. Write it, write the thing, do the thing, write the thing, write the words, write the story. You will never write the perfect story on the first draft. So you have to just be comfortable with writing something badly first and then you can edit it. It's like, I do think to a certain extent you are overthinking it. And I don't say that lightly or flippantly, but this is something I see often in my students, with my clients who I coach. We all are our own worst critics and we will always think that what we write is never good enough, especially if we're judging that first draft. And like when you're getting into writing or when you're writing a new genre, you really do have to just learn how to just push forward and just write it. So don't overthink it. I think that'd be my advice is, is that you probably are overthinking it. So don't, when you hear, when you feel yourself starting to overthink it, just learn how to acknowledge that voice and say, thanks for sharing. I'm doing this anyway. And just keep pushing forward because you're never going to feel more confident 
in writing romance or writing cozy mystery or whatever unless you give yourself permission to just try it. Try it and see what happens. I'm going to stop rambling, but I hope that helps. When I saw the question, when I saw your comment come in, I thought that's a really good question and something that I feel like a lot of people who are watching these vlogs probably are also dealing with. But yeah, thanks for the question, Abby. Please feel free, all of you, to ask questions like that because I think I saw that come in and I was just like, ooh, like, yeah, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Because I feel like it's something that a lot of you are probably also struggling with. Overthinking and imposter syndrome, like, should I be writing the genre that I'm writing? It's one of those times where you have to admit that, like, our brain sometimes tells us lies because it thinks it's pr protecting us from doing something that might make us feel silly or foolish or feel like a mistake or because we're so afraid of failing at writing cozy mystery or writing romance that we convince ourselves that we just shouldn't try in the first place. Great question and I'm glad you asked it and I hope that you guys continue bringing up topics like this and questions like this because I'd love to be able for all of us to talk about this so like feel free to weigh in in the comments. Like this can be our question of the vlog I think for today for for all of you who are writers you know, do how do you struggle with or get around struggling with overthinking or imposter syndrome when you have those thoughts of should I even be writing this genre or should I be writing this story? Other people can do this better than I, so maybe I shouldn't bother. Like, how do you cope with that? Because I think that's a very common struggle for writers. I feel like this is one of those things that it's like I tell my students in class, when you have a question, ask the question, because chances are half the other students in the room have the same question. And I feel like what Avi has brought up is something that is just so common with writers, and yet we're so afraid of seeming silly to ask the question in the first place we then don't ask it. So yeah, thank you for asking and for bringing up this topic because this has been really fun <laughs> to talk about. So let's chat in the comments. The rest of you, all my other writer friends who watch these vlogs, let me know your thoughts on overthinking and imposter syndrome and how do you feel confident writing the genre that you write. For everyone who's not a writer, your question, I guess for the readers of of our community here because if you're not a writer you're you're at least probably a reader if you're watching these what genres are you attracted to and what is it about that genre that attracts you like for me i've always loved romance and a little bit of fantasy and i think it's because growing up i oh, i loved fairy tales i loved fairy tales so much and so romance and fantasy, especially then if it's romantic fantasy, feels like the adult version of the fairy tales that I grew up with. So yeah, I'd love to know um, either as a writer, how do you cope with not overthinking and with imposter syndrome and feeling like, am I writing the right genre or not? Or should I be writing this genre or not? And if you're a reader, what genre what genre or genres are you attracted to and what is it that attracts you to that genre? Those are our question options for this vlog. I'm now going to go watch Morgan Long's video before it gets any later because I've been talking for 30 minutes. This is what happens when you guys ask good questions. I go off on really long tangents trying to answer them and then I have to cut half of it out to make the vlogs not five hours long. But yeah, this was fun. If you enjoyed this vlog, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. All of that great stuff. Answer our questions in the chat below. Or leave me a laptop or a writing-related emoji for our writer chat that we've just had. And yeah, I will see you all very soon in the next vlog. Thank you very much for watching this one. Bye!